Hi everyone. So let's finish our tour of the Scottish Highlands by probably the most famous uh, of them, St Kilda. And I have to confess I've never heard about St Kilda before my manager asked me to go. <laughs> I also have to confess uh, I never thought I would stay over there for two years in a row. <laughs> so. You probably all know where is located St. Kilda, but just to remind it, uh, St. Kilda is this tiny dot here. So 40 uh, miles west of North Uist, the closest, uh, closest shore. So what's happened on St. Kilda since the last two years? Uh, first of all, let's talk about the project. So for the last two years, this ship, it's a Norwegian ship called the Morsund, sells regularly to the island. And its uh, purpose uh, is to unload several tons of material and equipment for a specific project, which is in charge by uh, Galliford Tri, a company I will talk a wee bit just after. So the captain of the Morsund uh, sells every week to St. Kilda, to Village Bay, the largest uh, bay of the island. And from this position, uh, the captain has the delicate uh, task to land the, the ship on the beach. So it's quite an impressive uh, operation. So from this beach, when you walk along the, on the Onitamak Road to the west, you arrive to this nice pile of turf. So why this turf is, is so important is because since the beginning of the walk, every dig we monitored, we had to conserve the turf in its lawn. The purpose is easy. Uh, it's just because the, t the turf is extremely rare on the island. So we need it for uh, the end of the job when the former military base will be destroyed and the land will be uh, uh, revegetalized again. So, on the other side of the road, there is an impressive uh, construction site. So that's uh, nearly a year now that the workers, uh, plumbers, electricians, engineers are working on it. <coughs> so the purpose is to refurbish and improve uh, the legacy former military facilities that you can see around the site. Uh, the company who is in charge of uh, this work is Galliford Tri on behalf of Kinetic and the Ministry of Defense. Uh, so this company has built a reputation for their construction in extreme environments. They delivered a research center in Antarctica and uh, Healthcare Center in Tristan da Cunha, one of the most isolated islands in the world, which is located between South Africa and Argentina. So beyond this uh, impressive logistical operation, Galliford Tri needs to ensure, first, that the ecosystem of the archipelago remains undisturbed, and second, do exactly the same with the remnant uh, of the cultural heritage site, which span several millennia. So the construction site uh, is in red and is surrounded by the accommodation building, the power center, and uh, the technical building of the red square. So from the beginning of the pro project and following an initial based desk assessment, guard archaeology has been engaged in the field work, which is constituted of a building recording to procure a cultural testimony of the life in the military base, a watching reef to monitor any ground breakings, a series of evaluation trenches, and finally an excavation. That's the most ex extensive and longest duration archaeological project ever to take place on the island. The initial first works begin in February 2017 and are still ongoing today. And I have a thought for my colleagues who are in the island at the moment. So the watching reef. As you, as you will see, has been quite busy. Uh, we have monitored more than 240 trenches and more than 100 small postal trenches so far, and the work is still, uh, is still ongoing. 
So these excavations are related to various uh, different works as the installation uh, of a temporary camp, which is here. Uh, also, some storage facilities, which were just in front of the VIP room. And also uh, fences, so you have some fences here, all around here, on the, on the north here, just to keep the ship away uh, of the site. And also for services, drainage systems, and retaining wall. So the majority of these trenches uh, revel revealed an intermediate deposit uh, highly disturbed by the demolition of the former uh, military base. And some of these trenches, uh, five in total, revealed some uh, remnants of this, uh, of this past, of this military past. And for example, last week, trench number 240 revealed these uh, concrete base stones and walls, which is a remnant of the former ablution ratings uh, block for the former base. So most of the trenches uh, showed construction made, of course, of concrete, uh, some of them with bricks. Now, there were no surprises uh, with these structures. They were exactly found uh, where the building once stood, and we have the maps uh, for, 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 for this base. Nonetheless, we find uh, a few uh, remnants of archaeology in two trenches, uh, 4 and 12. Uh, these trenches revealed um, an encountered structured stone linear feature. You have here the example of the trench 4, which is here just in the bottom. So it was interpreted as the rubble stone age of a wider structure, who could possibly be a channel stream. A slot excavated uh, in, this, uh, in this trench uh, through the stones, in fact, revealed a natural cut, possibly for this, uh, this channel. So this phase is really frustrating due to the limitation of the size of each trench. We can't extend the width uh, and the length of these digs because it's only a watching brief. We can't also dig deeper sometimes because we don't reach any archaeological horizon. However, these trench, trenches uh, gave a glimpse of the potential archaeology on this area. And a series of 10 evaluation trenches definitely confirmed the presence of main archaeology. So let's have a look at the, one of the two uh, evaluation trenches we, where we found some archaeology. The first one here, as you see, we found a dry stone wall or possible uh, dike. Now, due to the position uh, of, the, of, the, of the trench, we could not extend uh, and, and we could not also uh, understand the uh, full length of this, of this dry stone wall. E even, even for the width of the wall, we didn't really have it. And as you see, uh, this wall could have been truncated uh, by some modern uh, services. You have a water pipe here. There was an electric cable running over there. And also, the ground surface is quite low. The other trench revealed uh, drainage stone features running north-south. And like the wall found in the, in the previous trench, its length extended outside of the trench. And this, uh, this part uh, has been really uh, heavily disturbed. You have a first pipe here. It was running all over there. You have the same, in fact, the same water pipe we had in the previous trench was crossing all the site. And they probably, uh, unfortunately, disturbed <coughs> the uh, side of these features. <coughs> so the archaeology uncovered uh, during this evaluation is likely to be the remains of the relic field systems, which existed in this uh, location prior to the initial installation of the military base. These uh, evaluation trenches were quickly followed by the beginning of an archaeological excavation. So this excavation uh, took place from uh, November 2017 to March 2018. 
and a total of more than 1,000 square meters of open area excavation was undertaken across the, foot, uh, across the footprint of the new accommodation building. And again, I think it's, uh, it's important to remind it, but it's the largest archaeological investigation ever to take place on St. Kilda. So, what did we find? A lot of stones. <laughs> So the, the site, uh, in fact, was recovered with unstructured rubble stones. Uh, this uh, term, in fact, designated afterwards what we first thought was possible features when we were stripping the ground. They were revealed first uh, by putative courses of uh, stone of various sizes, uh, from really tiny ones to huge boulders, um, nearly, nearly more than one meter fifty uh, long. So, however, um, after investigation, it appears that these stones uh, did not form any particular shapes or follow any alignments. There was no obvious anthropogenic build, neither. These stones were probably only uh, the, the result of the site being uh, on a scree loop of the steep hill Ozival. But in these unstructured rebels, we found some structured stones. And we found four main features, which is here uh, the stream, stream across the site, associated with two walls here and here, and a last feature in the south of the site, another wall. So most of this uh, feature seems to have been disturbed previously. Uh, at least two walls were likely to have been truncated, this wall and this one. Even the stream channel was truncated by the MOD activities just here in the corner of the site. And all that was the result of the use of the site by the MOD during 15 years. That's the remnant of the whole base. So basically, we have two main buildings. Uh, we were crossing the site, one here, as the one I showed you the, the picture before, which is the uh, racing ablution block, and an accommodation building, uh, which was just here. And of course, as you can see everywhere on site, we have services for the drainage systems, electric cables, manholes. All that disturbs the site. So, in the south part of the site, uh, a potential wall was uh, noted uh, within the rubble spread. Uh, it's quite hard to see. You will, uh, you will see with the, with the pictures. It seems to be formed by two rows of uh, granophyre stones. Uh, extremely difficult to see, but you have a first row here, second here. <coughs> So the feature was slightly curvilinear in, uh, in plan. It comprised a single course of stone. It could have been a renewed wall for a cleat or a black house, but without any evidences, it's really hard to say what this feature is. And in fact, it's much more easy to say what it's not. It's not a representative of the leveled terraces which are depicted here in the 1957 uh, village, play, uh, village Bay plan made by uh, Mark Gregors. We didn't find any of these uh, of this remains during the excavation and during the washing reef. So none of this was found in the ground, and it appeared that all the archaeology we found uh, in the footprint of the building discovered uh, on this site predated the 19th uh, century. The major feature was the stream channel. So he crossed the site on a distance of 30 meters long. Uh, why is so important? Because first of all, you could say it's just a, just a mindering cut, natural cut of a stream channel. But what is really interesting, if the south, south part of the channel is like that, 
the north part has been uh, modified with big boulders of stones on each side. So the stream channel was canalized at some period uh, predated the 19th century. So as you see on this uh, picture, uh, the northeast side of the channel was built with these big uh, stones on nearly 16 meters long. And the other side, the southwest edge, uh, was built of the same materials on only, 17, uh, only on seven meters long. The void between the two sides is quite narrow, as you see on the picture, it's nearly, it's only 60 centimeters. But what's, what's interesting here is the southwest side uh, is not as well done as the northeast side. In fact, uh, at this location, just behind these stones, we found the evidence of a wall, which is just here on the plain. And this, this wall could have uh, acted as a support wall when the channel was remodeled and narrowed. So this is uh, the wall found just behind the, the side. And during the removal of this wall, in fact, we found a better nice age, which, which is really similar <coughs> to the other side. And in fact, it could have been the the first, uh, the first void between uh, the two sides of the, of, the, of the channel, which is one meter in width. But unfortunately, we don't know for what reason uh, they modify so heavily the channel. So other remains we found was this wall, uh, 17, meter, 17 meters long, which was, which was built uh, with rubbles, uh, there is no clear coursing course, uh, of stones on the edge. Uh, nonetheless, as you can see on this picture, you have the, re the remains of the wall. So the evaluation trench was done over there. So we followed the, the, the full extent uh, of the wall and is still continuing in the section uh, of the excavation. What was interesting is during the removal of these stones, we found uh, some uh, end set uh, granophyre stones just here, which acted uh, nearly as a remodification of the wall at a later period, uh, probably to support um, the corner of the channel when they modified the channel again. Uh, so in the 1957s, Mark Gregor plan uh, shows nonetheless useful information because this channel uh, is still depicted. You see the red, uh, the red line, in fact, is the uh, continuation of the channel we found during the excavation and which survived till, uh, till the, milita the military arrived on the island in 1957. And in fact, the outfall of this stream is still visible today. Uh, next to the entrance of uh, the kitchen and uh, office facilities. Other information is we didn't find any evidence of this uh, wheat stream here, so it could probably just have a, a wheat drain. Um, and see, the drain is probably underground, uh, as many exist today uh, in, the, in Village Bay. But the course is, is probably here on the north. And that's still visible today, even uh, if it's dry, because most of these uh, features were completely abandoned in uh, 1834 when they reorganized the croft and they canalized the dry burn, this uh, really uh, long uh, burn. And as you can see today, uh, that's the remnant uh, of the channel further up in the village. So you have this uh, V embankment shape still visible on the ground. And uh, just here and along the course, you can see some holes in the ground. And in fact, it's some underground conduits. So the water is, could have uh, flowed, flowed on this direction till the, the, the channel we found during the, the excavation. So basically, the stream channel we found could have been the former dry burn and everything 
was connected uh, at this part of the site, running down and going till the till the ocean, and was completely uh, modified uh, in 1834 during the, re the reorganization uh, of of the of the land and the creation uh, of all this portion of land, reorganization of the village, creation of the of the of the dike. So the canoeist part uh, of the channel, that's another, that's another view, uh, the channel could have been continued here because we found the evidence uh, of the dry part between these uh, this two cliffs here. So this canoeist part uh, seemingly looks like a mill lead. Uh, we didn't find any evidence at all of that, even in the historical uh, records. There is only record of hand mills using uh, for milling cereals. So that probably suggests the channel may have been modified purely uh, as a means for localized flood, flood alleviation. But the construction of uh, the base is still in progress. <coughs> uh, that's a picture taken last, year, uh, last week. So so has the watching brief. So the, inv the investigation of uh, some features uh, uncovered during the excavation may, uh, may be continued. We have already done two trenches uh, on top of the stream and the northeast wall uh, last year. The first trench showed another portion of uh, the channel, uh, which is exactly the same as the, the one we found during the excavation, while the other trench uh, discovered the presence of a cut just in the, in, 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 along the, the edge of the wall. And another small investigation is ongoing at the <coughs> moment uh, on, the same, uh, on the same part uh, of, the, of the channel. So hopefully will give us more, uh, more info information. So these trenches, and also uh, we need to remind it that the post-excavation work didn't begin yet. Uh, Beverly, when we'll, she will have finished with her great job in Karnushti, could begin uh, the work for St. Kilda. And all that can extend uh, our understanding of the sites in area which have not been investigated uh, during the uh, excavation. But already those discoveries uh, of previous unknown archaeology provide um, valuable opportunities to contribute to the understanding of the development of the settlement at the southeast <coughs> of the bay over probably centuries and maybe, I will say, maybe, maybe millennia. Thank you for your attention.